a 30 year old woman presents to your office complaining of irregular menstrual cycles and history of lost menstruation over five months. She also gives a history of a milky discharge from both her nipples. You order a pregnancy test which turns out to be negative and the laboratory reports for hormone levels reveals increased prolactin and decreased luteinizing hormone and the follicle stimulating hormone. So you decide to arrive at diagnosis after an MRI of her brain. So this is the case of prolactinoma. So prolactinoma is the most common type of the hormone producing tumor that can develop in the pituitary gland. A non-cancerous tumor that is adenoma of the pituitary gland overproduces the hormone called as prolactin. So the major effect is decreased levels of sex hormones that is estrogen in the women and testosterone in the men. If you see the etiology of uh, prolactinoma, it is mainly caused by the pituitary lactotrophic adenoma which is the most common pituitary tumor of the anterior lobe and uh, it is associated with MEN1. And if you see the pathology and pathophysiology of the prolactinoma, adenoma can be microadenoma which is less than 1 cm which is functional or macroadenoma which is greater than 1 cm and non-functional. So the most common pituitary adenoma is microadenoma and the most common microadenoma is prolactinoma. So what is the pathophysiology of this? Hyperprolactinemia results in decreased levels of follicle stimulating hormone and decreased levels of luteinizing hormone via feedback inhibition. If you see the pituitary adenoma under microscopic picture there is cellular monomorphism seen in the adenoma in contrast to that of normal pituitary. If you see the normal pituitary the adenohypophysis that is anterior pituitary contains three major cell types acidophils, basophils and chromophobes. So the pink acidophils secrete growth hormone and prolactin but as you can see in this picture that the dark purple basophils secrete corticotropin that is adenocorticotropic hormone, thyroid stimulating hormone that is TSH and the gonadotropins that is follicle stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone. But the pale staining cells what you can see over here contains chromophobes. They have few cytoplasmic granules but may have secretory activity. Now what are the clinical manifestations in prolactinoma? Aminoria in the woman and impotence in the men are the most characteristic features in prolactinoma. Infertility is predominantly seen in more than 80% of the cases. Galactoria is predominantly seen in the woman and bitemporal hemianopsia is more commonly seen in macroadenoma compared to that of microadenoma. Not only the bitemporal hemianopsia, other visual disturbances owing to possible compression of the optic chiasm. Now let us talk about the diagnosis. So the diagnosis of hyperprolactinemia is made by serum prolactin concentration that is well above the normal range which is greater than 20 nanograms per ml. If an initial serum prolactin concentration is only slightly elevated that is 21 to 40 nanograms per ml the test should be repeated before the patient is considered to have hyperprolactinemia. So the hyperprolactinemia is a potential cause of oligomenorrhea, aminoria, galactoria and infertility in the woman. Hypogonadism and erectile dysfunction are predominant symptoms in the men. Therefore, serum prolactin levels should be measured in a patient who present with any of these symptoms. And what are the lab findings? As I already mentioned, the lab findings are evident with decreased luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone and increased prolactin levels. And next is the treatment. Treatment can be done by bromocryptine, which is a dopamine analog to suppress prolactin secretion. Surgery or radiation to remove adenoma. So this is what we should know about prolactinoma.